Welcome back. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Major General Farooq Yahya as the new Chief of Army Staff. The lawmakers took the decision after considering the report of its Joint Committee on Defense and Army. The new Army Chief show has a lot to deal with. Boko Haram, banditry, ISWAP, the incursion of the Army into internal security, low morale of uh, Nigerian Army uh, officers and of course questions over the management of budgetary allocations. We have a security expert and former Air Force officer, Sadiq Shehu, with us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Shehu. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're getting into, you know, uh, Farooq Yahya and, of course, the expectations for the time that he uh, has been given to be Chief of Army Staff. There's a lot of pressure, I believe, that is going to be on him. Um, where would you think that his biggest challenge will be? Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, now that uh, the Senate has done the formal, uh, you know, approval for the appointment of General Lehaya, uh, what remains for him now is to go back to task. But uh, uh, the good thing in this uh, appointment is that uh, General Lehaya is coming directly from the Northeast. The major challenge facing the Nigerian security or even the Nigerian military is the operation in the Northeast of course, together with the other non-war operations like the anti-banditry, anti-kidnapping that are happening all over the country. So for someone who has been at the, at the war front, I think he know from where to carry his relief. And uh, the good thing about the military organization is that there is continuity. What do I mean by continuity? All the uh, structures, the uh, deployments are already in place. So uh, General Haya will be working on a familiar terrain, even though it's a very difficult and challenging terrain. But the fact that he's coming from the Northeast, uh, from his uh, biography, is somebody who has had a different command structure. I think this will help him in tackling the, the task that is at hand. And like you said, on which uh, a lot of Nigerians are, play, uh, are placing a lot of uh, expectations on him. Uh, having said that, every new commander Apart from the fact that basic things in the military still remain the same, every commander brings to some extent his way of doing things. So definitely I expect uh, General Yahya to bring his own style of doing things without completely abandoning the good things that his positions have done. So he will look at what is on the ground, uh, definitely make a few changes either in his appointments, in his uh, senior appointment, and then the tactics to pursue. But yep. all the same, he will be uh, held by the operational, I mean, uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by the institutional memory that resides in the army. There are also that have been there, and uh, he'll be benefiting from them while bringing a little of his own personal touch. That's yeah, uh, I think, you know, accepting the fact that he has a lot of experience, you know, and, um, you know, he, of course, like you said, is from the Northeast. He's also been in the forefront of the war for a long time now. But what I'm asking is, where do you think the challenge will be, the biggest challenge that he might face? Uh, with uh, prosecuting this war? Is it with the morale of, his, of the officers? Will it be with funding? Will it also be with army-civilian relations um, or, or anything like that? Where would, do you think he might uh, need to have uh, the most focus? Okay. Um, he'll be facing challenges that his producers face in the area of personnel. We've been saying it over again, and I think it has finally reached the government that definitely the Nigerian army or the Nigerian military as a whole, they have a shortage of personnel. So he will be inheriting that problem. But we hope the, I mean, uh, I'm happy to see that uh, there has been some, uh, recently we had an enlarged recruitment at uh, the Nigerian army depot in Zaria, just before the demise of the former chief of army staff. In fact, that's why he was going when he had this accident. But we hope this has to be continued. The military machine has to be oiled and serviced many years over we don't have to wait for war please i hope the he will, he will in, in, in i mean in solving the problem of personnel government will give him the resources and the go ahead to continue recruitment apart from so apart from a human resources there's also the resources of equipment the nigerian military has serious gaps in equipment i'm sure he will look at uh, he knows what is on the ground he will look at it and tell the political masters exactly where the nigerian army stands in terms of equipment. Uh, of course, 
Both the personnel, personnel resources and the equipment resources, again, is a function of funding. Again, we, we may say that uh, we are seeing some movement, as I have the federal government has approved uh, or has submitted for, for, for National Assembly consideration uh, a supplementary budget to allow. But again, here, I will still emphasize that uh, the problem we are facing now in terms of uh, personnel and this thing is a problem that has been on since 1999. If you study the pattern of recruitment and buying of equipment, the truth is that Nigeria has not done much since 1999 to date. And uh, we always say that uh, the military might is just like a fire tender. If you have a fire tender, you may, you may spend six years, you don't have a fire problem. But as a wise man, you will continue to make sure that that fire tender has well, it is serviced, the blocks are working, everything. So that when the fire comes, it's not that. So the, the lesson we are learning now is that we have to continue, whether during peace or wartime, the military machine has to be continually sharpened and oiled. That is the price we are paying now. But it is not insurmountable, only that it is very difficult. If the time you are fighting is also the time you are looking for recruits, is the time you are also looking for equipment. But these are the challenges. Of course, there are also the challenges of uh, morale. Morale is related also to the low number of troops. It is unfortunate that due to lack of troops, rotation cannot take place. So troops are overstaying. Ideally, in most countries, the maximum that the soldiers should do in the war front is one year and then he comes back. That's why in post planning, you always plan that for every soldier that is killed, there are four other soldiers behind him. One resting, one training, one doing admin, and one trying to come back. That is how it should be. But because of the low numbers, we do not have that luxury of changing the truth. So again, that is part of welfare. And then you have to remember that the soldiers are also human beings. They have wives, they have children that, are, that have not seen them for a long time. You know, we don't want situations where a soldier will come and then his wife is not there, his wife had desired to these are things that could happen. So uh, the morale also could raise. Uh, the other issue which uh, goes without saying is to ensure that whatever entitlements the fighting soldiers have, that it reaches them. These are the issues that uh, General Haya will be, uh, will be confronted with. All right. Um, Mr. Shehu, I want us to uh, focus on the challenge of Nigeria's porous borders. For example, we know that Niger borders about four states in Nigeria. There's also, you know, the challenge regarding, you know, the insecurity about how these borders, you've seen pictures and videos about how there's minimal to zero security in these borders. So how do you think the chief of army staff, in the person of uh, Farouk Yahaya, can begin to check you know, these borders and for stricter border control to ensure that there is no you know, uh, crossover of terrorists? Since the president keeps saying these people are foreigners and are not Nigerians, to check their movement into the country. Uh, well, uh, the issue of border border security is the province of uh, Nigerian Immigration Services and some extent Nigerian Customs Services. Even though in the approach to full of government approach, the army has some units that are stationed in the borders, they could give assistance if requested to the Nigerian Immigration Services and the Customs Services. But we have to be aware that uh, the major role of border security is that of those two other agencies. Uh, and again, uh, your question is very jammy. Again, it brings up the issue, what do we mean when we say counterinsurgency? There's always tendency to look at only the military aspect. But the typical definition of counterinsurgency is a combination of political, military, economic, legal, all aspects of national power. So that's why we're talking of more coordination. While it is not the sole responsibility of the army to check borders, but they have a units that are across the border and they can lend and interface with the immigration services to ensure that our borders are properly manned. The customs also plays a role, even though customs is not directly in border security, but customs do checks and, 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 and mean along these borders. And if we put more emphasis on those checks, you will see that all the proliferation of arms that are coming into the country will be checked to a large extent. Like we've had in the past, the custom has made scissors along those places. So it is a, a synergized approach. While the main effort for border security is with the immigration and to some extent the customs, but military, police, prisons, all other national uh, security and civil defense, all they have a role to play to help the Nigerian immigration services to ensure that our borders are properly managed. 
All right, um, Mr. Cheo, I also need to ask you, um, with the way security now is in Nigeria, do you think, you know, having militarized borders across the country is something we should consider doing? And do we even have the manpower for it? Militarized borders, you said? Yes. Are you talking of placing military uh, on the borders? Yes. Yes, okay, like I said, uh, it's not the role of the military to really secure borders, even though they have a supplementary role in assisting the Nigerian Immigration Services. But again, the other question I've also asked, answered it. Uh, Nigeria has uh, the whole military, in fact, somebody has said the whole military apparatus, we do not have one million people. At least a country of 200 plus million, with our size, with our territorial, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, um, geopolitical aspirations. So definitely we do not have, we don't have enough military, we don't have enough police, we don't have enough civil defense. That is a reality which the political masters must face. On the part of the mutual uh, the, the army staff, what he owes the government to do, what he owes the political masters is to tell them for this operation, this is the minimum number of tools that I need. It is up to the political masters to do the need. All right. Mm -hmm. um... Uh, some people have mentioned uh, that, um, first of all, the Nigerian army uh, is not meant to be seen, you know, in, on the streets, you know, doing day-to-day -day police work. Uh, they currently are spread thin across the country, uh, in the southeast, in the Middle Belt, and of course in the north, uh, northern parts of Nigeria. Um, and, you know, there's people who say that it, it basically has led to a disrespect for the integrity of the Nigerian army and its soldiers. Uh, but I want us to have a conversation about the uh, army-civilian relationship. Um, Amnesty International and other uh, organizations have uh, pointed out rights abuses and uh, sometimes going you know, against the rules of engagement uh, with civilians uh, you know, across Nigeria. How do you think that this can be fixed uh, to build a better army-civilian relationship in Nigeria and um, you know, be able to get intelligence from citizens? Uh, thank you very much. Um, first, the issue of deployment of military in, uh, in the internal security operations, apart from the war operation in the Northeast. Uh, when people uh, you know, bring this argument, it is always uh, easy to forget that the issue of deploying military for internal security operations is an issue which, has, which the Nigerian Constitution, I think Section 217 or 218, has made adequate operation. So in itself, as long as it is in our constitution, there is nothing illegal about doing that. But having done that, again, there are the issues of rules and uh, rules of enforcement. There are when you are in an internal security operations, our training should always emphasize that you are not dealing with enemy in quotation mark as you would with Boko Haram. You are dealing with uh, citizens who are lawbreakers. So definitely the kind of uh, uh, force or the kind of tactics you use our military or our police or whoever is doing internal security operation should put that at the back of their mind. But again, it is not an illegal concept. Unless if we change our, 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 you know, our constitutional provisions, which says, because people are quick to point that in, in the U.S. we don't do that. Well, while that, that may not be completely true, but in U.S. they have rules which actually forbid that. We do not have that. Now, on the issue of military-civil relationship, definitely the army has to be seen as a people's army. The citizens have to see the army or any military apparatus as their own. So the military, I, I, I must say that uh, I, I left the military in 2016. From the time I left now, we didn't used to have a civil military relation outfit in any of the services. Now all the services, army, navy, air force, and defense headquarters, they have a civil military relation component. So this shows you that uh, the, I mean, the, 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 the relevance of civil military relations in modern operations has been appreciated by the army. Can it be better? Definitely. You can better whatever you do. There is nothing in this world that cannot be better. Even the international uh, you know, examples we grow, they are always trying to better. So we reduce and do. But then what I am saying, the evidence of doing more in terms of civil military is evident. We have civil military relations after that are headed by generals now. We did, if you check 10 years back, we do not have such outfits. But continuous training, continuous engagement, especially in the counterinsurgency operation. Counterinsurgency operation is an operation for the heart and mind of the people. If you do not get the heart and mind of the people on your, on your, on your side, you will not win. And also for internal security operations, which are basically law enforcement operations, you need the support of the people. 
the military and other security agencies should do more to bring the people towards them. However, again, I call on Nigerians to see the military and security agencies as their own. Sometimes some of the things you see on uh, social media or on the regular media about how Nigerians are actually are to the, to, to, the, to the military or security agencies is very disheartening because these are the people who put their lives on the line to make sure that you sleep at home. So at least you owe them that uh, little respect, but at the same time, it's a reciprocal relationship. The security forces should ensure that whenever there are an operation against uh, uh, citizens, that use of minimum force is emphasized. But when I say minimum force, again, it is not good for the civilian to assume that when you are breaking a law up to a certain extent, that the security forces are not going to use live bullet, like I see people saying they should go with a blank round. It's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, a, a security personnel on duty does not know what to expect when he reaches there. So definitely he will go with a selection of four from the minimum to the highest. All right. And then based on the judgment, based on his judgment on the police, he can use any of those forces. So please, it's good for the civilians to understand that. It's also good for the, I mean, the security agencies to ensure they do everything to carry the friendship of the of the of the Nigerian population. All right, Mr. Sadiq Shehu, security consultant. Uh, we thank you for your perspective on this uh, issue this morning. Thank you very much. All right, uh, the, our next topic will be about a very important day, uh, even though it's uh, much of a look, and the subject or, as well. It's uh, International Widows' Day, it's celebrated yearly on the 23rd of June. I'll be speaking with uh, our analysts later on. Do stay with us. <laughs>